The independent documentary The War on Doping is under production and will be ready for the international TV market during the spring of 2012, prior to the London Olympics. What makes young athletes risk their lives and take dangerous substances just to become number one? There are, of course, some easy answers to that. But how come it just goes on the way it does? When sports fans, the media, and even the athletes themselves hate cheating in sports. Or do they? Who knows what is really going on? And why don't management and athletes take a clearer stand for clean sports? The questions are many. A major now for the first time the man who started it all is ready to tell the true story behind the fight against doping in sports he's been fighting it for over 40 years and at the age of 80 professor Arne Jungqvist is still an active and leading member of several international organizations and travels the world at a furious tempo on his mission and now we are four years after and still some 60 members have not done it. I would not move a millimetre without his view and without his judgment. In one timeline, we'll meet and listen to Professor Jungfist's extraordinary stories behind some major scandals and his view of the fight against doping. In the other, we'll listen to celebrities, world-famous athletes, sponsors, media representatives and scientists giving their view of past, current and future doping issues. That this is the first time, really the first time, that we are taking a blood sample from each participant. At sports bars and in the streets all over the world, we'll meet ordinary people talking about doping in sports. I don't think you can go back and hold somebody accountable for something that wasn't a rule. But if it's a rule, a rule's a rule. I say no, but I, I'm also on the line a little bit, so there might be about 15% in there that's kind of like me. It would be fun to watch. The story will start during the Cold War, when the DDR, strategically and at the highest level, took the decision to initiate one of the biggest physical experiments on young athletes ever just to gain political respect and power. <laughs> Professor Jungfist's description of how he put pressure on Dr. Manfred Höppner, the leading architect of the DDR's doping program, in his own sauna, makes truly compelling listening. The story of the legendary 100-meter final at the Seoul Olympics in 1988 made Ben Johnson one of the biggest losers ever in sports is told here as are other major scandals in sports such as cycling cross-country as well as the major Austrian blood doping scandal at the Turin Olympics baseball and more that leads us to the extraordinary Balco scandal in California a story that starts off with special agent Jeff Novitsky investigating possible money laundering by the Balco laboratories and ends up with the biggest doping scandal ever in the US. I got a call one day, a telephone call, from a uh, investigator um, named Jeff Novitsky. I received a telephone call at 5.30 in the morning, um, which you can imagine doesn't happen every day. And nobody knew the name Balco, and Jeff was looking for somebody who was an expert on drugs and sport. Balco, for the first time, was a doping conspiracy which was unearthed and gave rise to numerous cases to be prosecuted both against athletes, coaches and athlete support personnel. And it was truly momentous in that respect. WADA. The documentary will take a closer look at the work of this organization and hear voices from within telling about the fight. Our first issue that we were asked to address was find a document that could pull all of the regulations from all the sports and all the countries of the world and put it into one so that we can all understand whether we're an athlete in China or an athlete in Chile what the rules are and what will happen if I break them. 
So this is the new instrumentation that we purchased and was just developed in 2010, luckily. So basically what it allows us to do is to detect something that an athlete could have taken a month ago. As the WADA code forces top athletes around the world to at all times declare their position and with the new widely debated blood passes becoming mandatory, we will meet athletes who tell how seriously they feel this has affected their integrity. We'll also learn about how an unannounced doping test works. Should doping be allowed or banned? We'll listen to both sides of the story. This is not something that people should be afraid of. Uh, in fact, it's the more responsible position to try to invest into developing safer technologies that athletes can use. Currently, I think that we don't do enough to protect the athlete's health through these policies. And in one specific and compelling part of the film, an anonymous scientist will be showing us how to make an untraceable drug. This to back up his view that one can never hope to put an end to doping in sports. They don't get the big ones. The big ones are just too smart. It would be more and more difficult for the athletes to trick because uh, this biological image, this biological fingerprint of the manipulation, it's difficult to hide, in fact. We have genetic tools that will find how every gene in the body, all 25,000 genes, is responding. We raise the vital questions, who knows about what's really going on? And who doesn't want to know if something is going on? If once they start getting into the process, they have no way to come out. It's, it, and I've seen in some situation, it's mafia-like. Omerta, silence, everybody is forced to do it, otherwise they are excluded. Doping has become big business, and its use is growing amongst young people in gyms around the world. Here, control is non-existent, and the dope is widespread. Anything in excess is going to cause side effects. And of course, there's not a bodybuilder on this planet who has not had some sort of side effects from taking steroids, even some supplements. World-leading physicians and scientists will help us describe a new and scary gene, as well as nano-doping scenarios with unforeseeable risks. Athletes will be injured and will be damaged and be hurt far before, or long before we, we see any effect on real performance. I guess people... Who Many questions have come up during the project and more are bound to arise. But one thing's clear, the question of doping in sports will continue to fascinate and engage us all forever. And talking of time, he is today still traveling the world on his mission to fight drugs in sports. Not necessarily to track down the cheats in sports, but, as he says, to help kids and coming athletes to avoid the chemical shortcut to misery. Excellent. Merci beaucoup.